Uh, welcome to the uh, last installment of the Silk uh, Summer Webinar Series. Um, I'll uh, uh, first uh, tell you what we're going to do today, and, uh, uh, and then Casper and Alicia will, will go ahead and uh, show their cool stuff. Let me share my screen with you for a minute. Um, zoom right there. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, before we start, uh, I already said this in the email, but you can uh, go to silk-webinars.silk.co uh, after this webinar to see, um, to see all the webinars in uh, one nice place with uh, links to all relevant tools, data sets, some descriptions, and uh, uh, it's nice to, uh, to see them all together. I hope. Um, so before we start with the uh, uh, with the webinar about uh, visual, uh, visualizing and analyzing data set, let me uh, tell you a bit about Silk first. Uh, Silk.co is a, a data publishing platform. So we're not just for building uh, visualizations like uh, other uh, simple tools uh, do, but we aim to be a platform really like uh, uh, like GitHub is a data uh, data platform where you can, uh, well, not a data platform, but a platform where you can share uh, code and work on code together. And uh, YouTube is a platform for video. We want to be a platform for data and data sets where, uh, uh, where you can easily share data, uh, work on it, uh, and make sense of it with visualizations and other uh, presentation tools. Um, we get used by a lot of different people, like NGOs and journalists, um, businesses, and personal uh, people also use it for personal projects. Uh, anything that requires a platform that can handle data well, really. Um, so uh, let me give you a few examples of cool silks. Uh, our homepage, silk.co slash home, shows uh, Silk sites being added every day, and uh, one we really like is the one of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They used uh, silk to uh, uh, to make sense of like all the Flickr images, all the uh, the pictures taken at the Met, uploaded to Flickr, and they uh, uh, they made an analysis. It goes really deep. You can really explore all these pictures, uh, see about what kind of art they are, um, yeah, other uh, visualizations and things. Um, we also have a really cool silk about data journalism tools, which might be handy in general for most of you uh, watching right now. Um, and let me also open the address bar so you can see the actual uh, address of these Thanks. Well, watching this is data dash journalism dash tools dot silk dot co, um, which is many things on like super hardcore data visualization or really easy tools. Uh, you can filter them on whether they're paid or free and open source or not. And uh, um, yeah. And so each page on on, on the silk. There's uh, a lot of information on it. That's, uh, that's a good point about Silk in general, that uh, normally where one point of data is just a row in a spreadsheet here, it can be uh, an uh, attractive page by itself, which is much nicer to look at and digest than a row in a spreadsheet, we think. Uh, we also have hobbyists, like people who want to create a database of a certain kind of thing, like this, this headphone database, which has all these uh, headphones in different price categories, but also information on whether they're open or closed and that kind of nerdy stuff. Um, and you can easily create image grids like this. Um, but yeah, best of all is like, or best of all, like, one really cool application of Silk are these big kind of like data journalism projects like Bellingcat, which is a, 
uh, yeah, an NGO who's, uh, who's uh, tracking uh, stuff in around Russia, who tries to be like an, uh, uh, try to, uh, yeah, be a uh, non-partisan voice, <laughs> or not really partisan, but uh, and not really non-partisan, but at least a counterpoint. Um, they let people send in sightings of, of uh, uh, military movements in the Ukraine, and uh, they map it, so you can see uh, the 20 latest sightings here on a map. Uh, you can dive into the data, like you can see all sightings by events, but also you can see what kind of like material has been uh, has been cited. So you can see that on this occasion, people saw an MBT, whatever that means, in a truck and BMPs, and you can click on that MBT and then see an overview of this kind of category and see where those have been spotted on the map. So we really think that's offering something extra and uh, it's a very nice way of displaying data, and we're happy to be a part of that. Uh, so back to the uh, to what we're going to do uh, today. Um, we're going to analyze and visualize data. Um, in the previous episodes, we talked about how uh, you can find good data um, and how you would go about cleaning and enhancing it. Um, but now we get to the really good part, and that is what will you do with with that good data? Uh, how do you analyze and visualize it? And how do you uh, find a good story in it and tell that story in a nice way? Um, so Kasper and Alice will tell you all about it. Um, they, they tell stories with data every day. They work here at Silk, and they create uh, Silk sites to show what's possible with Silks. And they will show us how to identify different types of data and how to look for patterns and outliers and how they go about creating a few different visualizations to see what kind of uh, different takes you can have on the data, and eventually how you can use uh, those findings to create an interesting uh, data story with it with multiple visualizations and explanatory text. Um, a bit of a practical remark before we start. Um, in the sidebar, you can see uh, the data sets uh, that, are, uh, uh, that Kasper and Alicia will use. Um, they will, you will first see a warning uh, message, because Google wouldn't let me share a, a Google Doc in a showcase for some reason. Um, so sorry about that, and, but you can click through and then see the Google Sheets they uh, used. And you can also click a little tool button on top. It's like uh, small squares. And if you click that, there's a Q&A button. Um, you can uh, use that to ask any questions you want. Uh, we, will, uh, we will gather them, and at the end, we will, uh, we will answer them for you. So please do that. It can be about Silk's product, but uh, more likely uh, about uh, any, anything you uh, hear us saying or uh, uh, relating to, uh, to visualizing and, and and uh, analyzing the data. All right, so um, uh, let's move on to uh, to the good stuff. Uh, I think Casper will uh, sh uh, will start first. Uh, yeah, hi, Cas. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. If you can I'll, hear me. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll enable you. Yeah, I think everyone sees just yeah. you now. Yeah, I've switched. Okay. Uh, I think I'll, I'm ready to go first with some some stories. I, we've picked a couple of stories we worked on uh, previously and or that are uh, uh, that we update regularly. And I think I'll just go over uh, one or two of them, sort of uh, organically, just based on some of the findings and the visualizations that we've uh, that we've used, and try to yeah keep keep with the intent of this webinar to show how to visualize the data that you have and then try to sort of find, uh, assuming that there's stories in there to find those, to find those things and, and, and tell it in a, in a sort of a visual story. I think I'll switch to uh, sharing my screen. Let's 
Let's see if this is working. Maybe not. Let me try again. Sorry. Let's see if this works better. I don't know if you maybe can confirm <laughs> that my screen is actually that you see uh, the spreadsheet I'm working on in Chrome? I, uh, I see it perfectly fine. OK, good. Perfect. I was wondering if I had the right screen in the right browser. No, well, no it's, it's, it's fine. Good. It's, so we're starting with this spreadsheet, but we don't have to go into this, because luckily we've, uh, we've covered those, those topics before, the cleaning and the selecting of the data and working in a spreadsheet, which, of course, is not the most fun part. So uh, today we can focus just on uh, going actually into the silk sites and building those silk sites with the data that you have. Um, little introduction. I, th I think I can cover uh, sort of the two stories, two, two data sets that we, that we covered. Um, but I'll start with this one, uh, where we have a, an ongoing analysis of the Uber job postings, which is one of the only uh, pieces of public data that is available about the company. We, we started out wanting to make or trying to collect interesting data about the company, such as the number of drivers in companies or how comparing Uber to, uh, to Lyft and other uh, drive uh, uh, ride-sharing companies. Um, but it was difficult to find that kind of information. But what we could find was something really simple. I'll show this first, and this is just um, the number of job openings that Uber posts on, on their own website. And of course, it's constantly updated with new uh, postings. And as you see, it's just a simple list with, on first sight, not really much information. You have a, a title. You have something of a function. For instance, if the, if the job is in operations or in finance or in engineering. And you have a location. That's the only. Um, uh, really uh, tableized information that you have. There's, of course, more information behind these links, but there wasn't really anything that would could be easily linked to each to each function, such as the uh, the pay, for instance. So, just working with this table, what we've started doing uh, about a year ago is just periodically collecting uh, this information just. The, the table, as you would see here on the website, and just a quick view of the actual spreadsheets uh, that we have, that we keep uh, every couple of months, uh, where, for instance, here you can see that the location, of course, can be split up into cities, states, countries, and continents, which uh, gives sort of more information, as we'll see later on. But that's basically all the information that was in there. Um, but it was, I think, also, because we have periodical updates, we can we can not only see where the company is hiring uh, and uh, how much it is hiring and for what kind of functions, but we can also see it sort of change over time, change see the the growth of the of the company worldwide over time. And just to be clear, that all these postings are not for actual drivers, but are let's say the the the, the Back end or the supporting uh, jobs uh, for the company, such as in marketing and operations and engineering. Um, like I said, we've created an, an ongoing sort of data story about this. Uh, as you see, we, we're now covering uh, about a year uh, since September. Last year, we uh, we, we collected uh, the first postings, and we've done that periodically to, to build also something of a, of a time uh, line. And I think the, the first, or the best way to go over it, to start just with, uh, with the finding on our homepage that we, that we kept. We have also different, more dedicated uh, pages on this same silk that go deeper into specific, uh, specific regions or countries or, or functions. But I can show a little bit of uh, the findings that we've that we've built, and this was uh, uh, with a spreadsheet just like this I've showed, um, uploaded into Silk. I'm not gonna 
show that. Maybe Alicia will do that later, but I, I think we've, we've covered that enough also in the, in the, previous, uh, the previous webinars. Uh, the spreadsheet that you see put into Silk uh, was enough to create uh, all kinds of visualizations and usually uh, you start with just exploring the data that you have. That's also the first thing that uh, Silk sort of takes you to as soon as you've completed your import it takes you into uh, explore mode so you can just play around and, and see what kind of visualizations are, are, are possible with, uh, with the data that you have. And as you can see here that from the simple page uh, collected over time of all the of all the job openings that Uber has, we 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 could we could sort of conclude uh, pretty much uh, a, a substantial kind of findings going into uh, what kind of locations and specifically what kind of growth and in growth in what in what upper, in what type of functions uh, the company is showing. Um, it's probably too much to go into everything right now to show all these findings. Uh, as you can see, the link you can of course find this website to, to go into it to deeper yourself. Um, but the homepage is full of uh, of the findings that we keep updating. Uh, with every new uh, data set that we have, we have more sort of snapshots of the growth of the company over time. And for instance, what the latest uh, data set showed that. Uh, particularly uh, Asia or, the, or Uber is particularly sort of expanding into Asia and then uh, uh, we could focus on, on two of the biggest countries in those regions but also the biggest uh, growth so markets which are China and India. We could show uh, for instance some snapshots over time here where you could see that uh, for most of the time since last year and up until maybe the beginning of this year, China has been the biggest uh, market sort of for, for Uber in Asia and also the biggest growth market. As you can see here that uh, the number of new uh, job openings has been growing in China for since last year with a, compared to other countries with a, with a high rate. The, at the moment there's a over 150 different job openings uh, listed uh, in China, which is uh, which is big, especially compared to, uh, to 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 a lot of other other countries. But you can also see that India has made a huge jump, and that there are now more job openings there than in than in China. Um, as you can see here, that the additional openings uh, for India have mostly come in the last couple of months. So our last snapshot before this month was in June. And since then, uh, the majority of job openings in India were, were added. Um, we could focus on the number of jobs uh, per city by doing, I can maybe show that real quick, how to get from the data set that we have. So this, was the, this would be the, the Uber jobs uh, data set where we could uh, focus on uh, 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 so this complete data set contains all the rows of all the different uh, job openings. You usually have the, or you always have the option for different uh, visualization modes to either just show all the bars, all the rows, and also show a distribution. Right now, this data set doesn't have any, let's say, numerical data because it's all information about the job. Right? It would be the job title and the function and the location. That's that's what we have. Um, so it cannot show a, a numerical chart, but in this case we don't want it because we want a distribution. So we want it to tell us how many of those more than a thousand job openings are for a specific city. And as you can see here, we have other filter modes. So we have, in this case, I wanted to I wanted to see uh, all the job openings just for China and then have it distribute all the job openings uh, per city. So that's what I, uh, what I did on the page that we were on where we're comparing China and India. And just doing that for both countries and, and putting it next together 
next to each other shows that the sort of the growth in China is spread out over a lot over a lot more cities while in India there are a couple of cities where they have let's say double digit numbers of, of new openings so it looks like the 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 expansion there is focused on these big cities where they make uh, a bigger effort to uh, a more concentrated effort in those cities um, another thing that we could do with the with the sort of the timeline data that we have because we took def different snapshots over time was compare the the growth rate so just looking at what kind of uh, uh, what number of uh, of job openings uh, were listed in September 2014 compared to the job openings that are open right now in September uh, 2015 a year later and then you can get a uh, uh, you can uh, have, uh, calculate the average growth rate between the two and you can see here that uh, that India's uh, growth rate is uh, is about twice as big as uh, as China's right now but as we can see here that's mostly because of the let's say the last quarter um, and a final thing that was quite easy to sort of distribute all the functions on uh, again split up by China uh, and India is to look at what kind of different functions uh, um, they're looking at, they're hiring new people for and if you just look at the, the left and the right a donut chart you see that both India and China are, have basically the, the, the same uh, distribution of type of functions um, so it's mostly operations marketing business and operations people operations for both those m make up uh, about three quarters of the uh, of all job openings but if you compare it to uh, a similar distribution of all the jobs by function but worldwide so for all the job openings they, they have currently what's missing in both of those is uh, any jobs in engineering so it doesn't look like they're looking for for new engineers at least not in those countries um, and that kind of led me to dive deeper into uh, uh, the jobs in engineering and it turns out that they are basically all located in the in the US so it looks like company keeps that sort of close to home and only really is looking for engineers in the US and of course if you can dive into it deeper it's mostly in San Francisco so that's not really that uh, surprising but uh, uh, it was just a, a final uh, focus on the, the type of functions compared between those countries but it turned out that in this case uh, engineering is mostly taking place in, in the US um, Let's see if this is a. Uh, I think this covers basically the most interesting uh, parts of the uh, Uber jobs analysis. Uh, like I said, we keep it. It's ongoing, so we hopefully over time it shows us even more interesting interesting things. But I hope this kind of shows that with a what started out as a simple list uh, with about three with three uh, values for each uh, for each row that that doesn't mean that you can take uh, quite a lot of information out of it in our case specifically with uh, distributions which just counts how many times each uh, specific row uh, uh, is related to in our case a country or a location or a function uh, let me check a little bit with time and our next sort of example or model I think should be enough and I think this is uh, the other spreadsheet that we also shared I think it's in the well no I'm not actually sure where we shared it but it, I think we shared the, uh, the, the, the spreadsheets that we've been, we've been working on so uh, anyone is free to, to look at that to go over it or copy it or use it the, Next, it is uh, Casper. It is okay. in the it is in the showcase, uh, which people will probably see by default. So on the right, you have a link to your uh, Kickstarter demo uh, set. Okay, that's good. Good to know that anyone. And can... I'll also email it uh, uh, to people afterwards. So.
Okay, then anyone can can if they feel like it, play with themselves. The yeah. kicks the Kickstarter one because the next showcase I want to give uh, concerns the Kickstarter uh, and then Kickstarter projects, but then we zoomed in on all the successful projects, so all the, the projects that 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 met their goal of uh, collecting a certain amount of money, and then we focused even more on on technology because we wanted to find out. How this uh, sort of crowdsourcing marketplace for technology project uh, was doing. So we a little bit very similar to the to the Uber Jobs uh, Silk. We've also have this Kickstarter technology project uh, Silk, where we also we were again periodically collect all this information about all these successful projects to compare it over time and compare compare them uh, with the, with each other. The spreadsheet that I shared here is, as you see here, it's a it's a demo mode because the actual worksheet that we use is is quite big and has a lot of different uh, uh, sheets and pivot tables. Um, but the demo basically shows uh, most of what we actually use in the Silk. But if there's something uh, that you would like to have shared, you can always uh, email us. If there's more information that you would like to see or information that you see in the silk, but that's not in the spreadsheet. Um, but again, we can go back to sort of the source where we uh, where we collected collected the information. And first, I think it's good to tell that Kickstarter does have some uh, some of their own analysis of the projects that they have. Um, I think they make like an annual. Uh, Analysis of all the projects that have been successful, and 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 they give out some some information and some very interesting visualizations or uh, or data analysis, but not it doesn't really cover everything and it doesn't cover it uh, as detailed as is possible because if you look here, this is just a a, rent, a basic uh, sort of overview of the tech projects that are successful on Kickstarter. And you can see that the table. Containing all these multiple projects already gives some information, but if you go into the actual page of each project, you'll see a lot more information. For instance, who created it, but then also where uh, are those initiators from? From what location? What country? What uh, place? You can see the number of backers that that pledged money, how much money they pledged, in what currency to the project, and if you go deeper into the updates and the campaign you can see at what date the the project was successful when it raised all the money that it that it uh, that it wanted and i'm sure there's also some more information about the money they the project intended to make which is also interesting to look at uh, to compare the 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 money the the project thought they would they would like to make and the actual money that was pledged and here you can see more location information and the kind of field sort of the technology field that the project is in so all this information is something uh, that we uh, we covered that before that we could collect and we've done that sort of multiple times over time which leads to this quite big silk by now because we have all of those projects uh, in here and every project uh, very much as these uh, sort of dedicated pages on the on the Kickstarter website basically we also have those kinds of uh, dedicated pages on the silk sites so we can go into or maybe show this example that's what we call sort of the data cards, which would be uh, every row in your spreadsheet becomes a data card on itself. And I'll show a little bit more about our uh, homepage and the data and the story we, we kind of told uh, with the data. But just a quick view of the of the data cards itself, which already contain, of course, all the information that we collected. And we could, uh, from all the information that was available on the website, we could also do some more information, like how much money uh, was given on average per backer and on average per day, stuff like that. But uh, not a very nice thing about the data cards themselves, uh, 
means that it turns a, a row from your spreadsheet with some basic information about every Kickstarter project into basically a data visualization itself and you can uh, create graphs that are specific to the project page that we're on. So in this case, this is not really a good example because I've created here a little Im image gallery that shows all the project from the city that is, in this case, it's, uh, it's a county here in the UK. Maybe this is a better example because this shows the same kind of uh, data card. It's a data card from the same collection. And what this gallery does is look at the city from this page and then shows all the other projects that have uh, that are from the same from the same city and we could do I've done something similar here is just show a map of all of the other projects uh, in the same country as uh, as this specific project and as you can see compare the the two data cards uh, that that means that every visualization, every chart on every data card shows something very specific to that project. And uh, so this is the same map, but on this data card it shows the United Kingdom because this project is from the United Kingdom, and on on, on the other a data card from the same collection it shows uh, the map from the Netherlands because this project is from the Netherlands. Um, that's just a uh, and I think this is just a sort of a light version of what you could do building all kinds of visualizations into into the data cards themselves, but we uh, can go back to our home page. Um, and the home page is, is a place more really dedicated to building uh, your visualizations that relate to your complete collection. So building the story around all the data we have about all the successful projects. Um, you can show a little bit of what we've uh, built so far on the home page. You can go to a, another specified uh, or dedicated page after this because we focused in on the, let's say the most successful projects. Um, but something nice here is, of course, because we had all those locations, is we could we could look at where the where the projects were from, and it wasn't really surprising that most of the the projects were originating uh, from the U.S. since it's a Kickstarter is a U.S.-based platform and uh, 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 so it turned out that 71% of all the tech projects uh, came from people or projects that are based in the US but by doing something simple as adding a filter by month or year in this case shows that the number of projects outside of the US are let's say growing faster or accumulating or are being produced faster than US projects because you can see here that last year in 2014 uh, about 74% of all projects were originated in the in the US and now a year later it's 67% uh, so that's going down that's a simple way of uh, of comparing those those two and it goes around a little or it, it, it kind of lets you compare things over time with actually, without actually building a, a huge uh, timeline or going into that. I do have something of a timeline to show from this is uh, let's say not from the original data set with rows with all the projects but uh, um, let's say this is a uh, in the spreadsheet I would I have made a pivot table out of this. I don't know. If it, I think that's something we've covered before, but if there's questions, you can always uh, uh, ask in the meantime. But here we could uh, make a pivot table of the original collection to show all kinds of information per uh, month. In, uh, in this case, we focus it on. So here we can see sort of the number of projects, or in this case, the, the total money pledged each month for all those tech projects over time and you can see the growth and you can see the peak here in the in the last year last year summer in the number of pledge but you can also see that that in total every month the number of uh, of pledges is uh, is is growing so there have been uh, not only more and more projects but uh, the total amount that has been pledged every month uh, is consistently uh, growing 
and just to compare it, I've added a second uh, second line here that shows the uh, the average per backer, and this is uh, based on the on a second uh, axis. And I hope that's that's clear, but that's a way to compare uh, different different values from your from your data set and look at uh, look at how they compare over time. In this case, um, like I said, we've taken the complete data set with all the quick start technology projects and focused on a couple just a little subset because it was interesting to see that quite some uh, projects ended up with money uh, being pledged uh, that was more that that went over a million uh, US dollars so we kind of focused on those uh, turned out there would be uh, so far since last year, because we we haven't collected any data before that, but uh, since we've started collecting data, there have been 28 projects initiated in Kickstarter that ended up with uh, with sometimes multiple millions of dollars in pledges. Um, so we uh, could easily build any kind of visualization just by I'll show what kind of uh, filters we've, we've used for a map like this. Um, go into the even more filters might be confusing to see at first, but uh, you can go over this yourself and try to find the value in all the different uh, options and filters that we that we have. But in this case, uh, I could simply select the range of pledges and just type in a uh, million dollars because I wanted to see only all the all the all the projects that ended up with uh, with more than. Uh, a million, uh, a million U.S. dollars in pledges. So you can see here, this uh, sort of temporary title gets generated automatically based on the on the things that you that you collect. So you can see here that it shows all the successful projects uh, that had pledged, uh, where U.S. dollars were pledged over over a million by location. So that's the map that we built on this on this page, a dedicated page, just showing the the million dollar Kickstarters, and that's basically the filter that we could apply every time to any charge that, chart that we built to sort of zoom in easily. Uh, something like this is also very interesting, those uh, the scatter plots that we, that we sometimes can use to show, sometimes you can show just outliers uh, like this one, like this project, but maybe I'll explain the chart uh, itself first. We've uh, put the uh, total number of pledges, million dollars, uh, to sort of compare it to the average per backer to kind of try to see where these projects get their money from. And it's interesting to see that, except for these four projects, actually most of the other uh, multi-million dollar projects get their money from basically a lot of backers and the average amount uh, of money being pledged is uh, is is lower than five hundred dollars, lot dollars, which is not a lot if you can, uh, uh, if you see the total money co money collected, like these uh, these big projects. Uh, but the big outlier here was uh, is this project for a, a 3D printer, where the average money that each backer has pledged is on is close to two thousand uh, dollars. So that's uh, that's considerably higher than than for most of the other projects. Um, again, we made a quick distribution chart to see where all these projects were coming from. Again, 75% uh, uh, is from the US. Um, and another thing, what I showed, I think we showed real quick. So just this simple information where they give uh, the goal money uh, uh, that each project Intends to raise and the actual money that can lead to uh, to a percentage. So we could calculate for each project uh, what the per percentage was uh, of their of their goal of the actual money that that they uh, that they ended up uh, receiving. So a lot of projects, of course, all successful projects uh, in, in the end raised 100 percent of their uh, of their goal, but many went way over. And again, this is a seemed like a nice opportunity to create a scatter plot to com compare the two a little bit, and I can sort of quickly 
show or deduce sort of what we what we kind of deduced uh, from this. And again, it's another project, but it's again it's a 3D printer project, which is 3D printer is uh, one of the top uh, sort of technology fields where a lot of projects, a lot of successful projects uh, operate in. But this just show, let's say, this outlier and kind of interpret uh, what what this sort of means where we uh, put the, the total amount and the percentage funded and you can see that over 6,000 percent of the initial goal was actually pledged. Um, that means sort of it comes down to uh, that the initial goal for this project was fifty thousand dollars and they ended up with over three and a half million. That kind of shows that they either aimed very very low to be to be safe that the, the project actually uh, was successful or they just were sort of overwhelmed with the, with the enthusiastic reactions um, and that kind of compares to two other again these two biggest biggest projects that I mean yes they still have uh, have received uh, over in this case 700 percent and in this case 500 percent of the initial goal but that means that they started out uh, trying to raise more than a million, uh, a million, a million dollars, as opposed to many other projects that were sort of uh, surprised because they they just aimed for a, for a low amount. And uh, I think, and that will be about sort of the last uh, visualizations and interpretations that I'll cover now because I think I'll be closing up to hand it over to Alicia soon. In a couple of minutes, but um, maybe compare these last two uh, uh, paragraphs that we that we've added. Again, still just comparing the the million dollar projects. We've look, been looking at what uh, what cities they originating or from, or, or in this case the the states, U.S. state, um, and we could see that. Uh, uh, most of them came came out of California, New York, and Massachusetts, um, and we could compare that again by building the same chart and then uh, uh, not adding any filter. So this uh, this second chart just compares uh, the complete data set and shows all the all the projects uh, per 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 U.S. state. And what was kind of uh, noticeable here is that big states like Texas and Florida, in particular, have a decent amount of projects, but looking at uh, comparing it or zooming in on those million-dollar projects, there are none from those states. And when you look at California, New York, and Massachusetts, those are the same three states that also top not only in the in the big money projects but all in in the complete data set. So it was kind of uh, uh, interesting to see. Uh, uh, that nothing so far has come out of uh, Texas or Florida, really big money, uh, successful projects. But that's something uh, hopefully over time gives sort of more hints about what kind of uh, locations to, to dive into. Mostly, of course, as this shows that California is the state where really most successful technology projects uh, so far uh, are coming from. And Maybe just to, to close up, to focus on uh, uh, a small distribution chart of the number of fields where all those big money projects uh, were active in. And then a lot of the projects are, are sort of grouped together in the, in, with some general terms as technology and hardware. Well, har hardware still covers a lot, but it's one of the biggest, uh, biggest the, the fields with the most projects, also uh, for these uh, multi-million dollar projects, but uh, an interesting third field was 3D printing that had uh, a handful of, uh, of really big money projects uh, and also looking at the complete data set that kind of, uh, uh, it also shows that 3D printing is one of the bigger the bigger fields where a lot of Kickstarter projects are uh, are, uh, are focusing on. Um, I think I have covered enough with this because I don't know if it's been uh, a lot and 
uh, quick, but I would just try, try to, to show a little bit of everything. Um, but as we said before, if there's any questions, you can just uh, have them coming in the meantime, and we can maybe uh, go into it uh, further or later. Um, but in the meantime, I think I should hand it over to Alice, who will show even more uh, examples of uh, visualizations and stories. That's a good idea. Good. Are you there, Alicia? Yes. Oh, yeah, you can uh, unmute uh, your mic, then we can hear you. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to show you uh, a bit of, like, how you can actually create the project. Uh, so how to go from, like, a spreadsheet to, like, a final product, like the ones Casper show, like, showcasing your data. And I'm going to use a sample data set on uh, movies. And you can start with any like movie list that has information about like directors or actors or plot and language and country. And I'm going to start with a list of movies that were presented at the Venice Film Festival like last week. And we're going to look, but you can use like you know Oscars or Sundance or whatever film festival you're interested in. And I'm going to show how you can find look for some insights in this data set. So for example. Uh, like the gender of the directors, are there like more men or more women directors and who's winning more prizes or like the countries who are presenting more in each film festival. Um, so this is the spreadsheet, uh, I think the link has been shared and so as a first step we're going to import this uh, data set in Silk. Sorry, uh, Alicia, can you share your screen? Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, so this is the spreadsheet, uh, and it has, like, all the movies and other information about the category in which they're participating, the director, the gender of the director, the writers, and so on. And if you want to learn how to build like a similar data set, you can look at our past uh, webinar, which was focused on like data cleaning and enhancing. And we show how to, you can use IMDb and APIs to like get to something similar to this. Uh, so, so to import this data set, you just need to go. I'm sorry to break in, Alicia, yeah. but uh, we have to share your screen a little bit. Uh, oh, here it is. I thought it was. Your screen sharing and presenting to everyone. OK. Uh, I didn't see it just now. OK, go back. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So it wasn't working. Uh, I think you uh, should pick this screen, and that's the, if you do it again, okay. and then, um, yeah, the, if you, desktop. Oh, it's the one I did before. Oh, sorry. And it wasn't. I couldn't see you then. Yeah, it's working now. Okay. No. And so, well, this is a spreadsheet. And um, we're going to import it in Silk. So you just go to your account. And we're going to create a new Silk here. Uh, we can call it 2015 Venice Film. And uh, so we're going to import that spreadsheet in the silk. So we just copy the URL, and we make sure that the, the spreadsheet has been shared so that to, to anyone with the link. And so and we just go here and then paste the URL of the spreadsheet and import it. And so we're going to import the list of movies. And this is a preview of what each page will like will, will look like. And we need to fix a few things. So for example, as you can see, there are multiple actors. So, and they're comma separated. So we want to split this tag on commas. So now there's a, li a bullet list of all the main actors. And uh, we want to do the same for directors. Uh, because in some movies, there's more than one. And also for the gender of the director. And also for writers. And then for uh, Jean, because there's more than one. Uh, countries and languages. And then we can get rid of some of the things that we use like for collecting the data, but we don't need them anymore to present it. So like the IMDb ID 
or the API call we use to collect data. And also we want to have the plot, since it's a long line, maybe like somewhere outside this grid. So we click on the gear and we use a use as paragraph. And so the plot will appear down here, or we can put it on the sidebar down here. And then we start importing. Okay, it's taking longer than usual. Start reloading. Okay, uh, so now like we have a data card for each movie, and you can see what they look like. Uh, and you know you can add more content like you know a video of a trailer or like a Twitter feed or like your review of the movie. Uh, you just add it and add the content. But we're going to look how to create some visualization that explore this data. And we can start like for example by looking uh, at the most uh, spoken languages, for example. So we just click distribution. Uh, which is language spoken, and we can put this maybe in a bar chart, it looks better. And so, language spoken, and so we see there's most movies speak English, and then it's interesting that the Venice Film Festival, it's international, but it, it's in Italy, and then there's more French movie than, French speaking movie than Italian movies, for example. And so for this reason, it could be interesting to look also like which countries are more represented. And France actually has more movies than any other country, even than Italy it has like uh, 11 more movies. And, and from this, we, can, we could also like transform it into a map, for example, where we, we plot on the basis of countries. And um, if we want, we can color by whether it was the winner of an award, for example. And we see the winning movies where they were from. And we can add also more information to show up in the pop-up bubble. So for example, we can add, I don't know, the image. And so we can create a map with all, all the movies that participated in the Venice Film Festival and when they, where they were from. And then we can also investigate like all sort of like correlations and data. So like we can have a scatter plot where we looked at like the IMDb votes and the IMDb rating of these movies. And this is partial because many of these movies were just released, so they don't have like enough votes. But just to give you an idea, you can also look like which one is the highest rated movie and which one got more votes. And and then we can start exploring maybe like more interesting stuff, for example, like the gender of the directors who participated. And so for this, we probably need like a donut chart. And we want the distribution of the directors. Oh, wait a second. Because it's, it's not showing all the movies for some reason. OK. So we want to see the distribution of the gender of the directors. So oh. so like 86, well, almost 87% of the movies at the Venice Film Festival were directed by a man, and only 13% by a woman. And we can, while like filtering this data, we can actually get more insights. For example, we can look at specific categories. So, for example, the offici official selection, which contains like the most prestigious movies that then win the Golden Lion, has actually even lower ratio of female directors, so only two out of 22. And while we can look at other, for example, Horizon, 
is the most like experimental movie section and here like there's quite some women like 25% of the directors were women and other things we can look at is like among the winners for example so if like 13% were women and among the winner only 7% so there was only one women director and we can look at which one it is simply by changing let's say to a list and we don't want the gender we want the list of movies and we then select gender of the director female so Bella Donna you can see was the only movie with a women director who won an award and well this is just to show you case you how you can find interesting things in data and then you can always like f feature them in like an article or create like a home page where you present them so for example you can just add the visualization like the most interesting ones here so you would click here and let's say you want to feature the donut chart of the gender I don't know why this is not working Okay, so you can put this one, and actually you want you can add the filters that you wanted, and you can write your story on top of here. You can add images, video, text, and you can also have different layouts. For example, different columns, and for example, I will show you a final product. It's for the Women in International Film Festival project uh, where I track the women's presence in the major film festival so it, it includes all the data about the Venice Film Festival but also about other festivals that are happening soon so for example there's the Toronto Film Festival which, which started like last week and so I'm tracking data about this as well and then I'm presenting it and comparing different festivals so how does the Venice Film Festival compare to the Toronto Film Festival and then you can create grids showcasing all the movies and you can compare like I showed you before the different sections of the film festival like the official selection the horizon and you can do the same on a two column to compare different pie charts and yeah so I showed you an example starting from uh, the Venice Film Festival but you can use it for many other things for example for the Oscars this is another project where I started from a similar data set and I imported in Silk just like I showed you and then I created like an analysis of how women score in different categories at the Academy Awards and whether this has been getting better or worse and it's getting a bit better and which categories are have most female or male nominees and so you can see costume design has more women than men and then acting well of course it's 50-50 and then there are cinematography or special effects that have the lowest female participation and well yeah this was a quick example of how to go from a spreadsheet to like exploring the data and then creating like an overview of your findings which you can share with your audience or in social media mm. oh. mm. was it? okay uh, thanks a lot, uh, Alicia. Um, I certainly uh, learned a lot. Um, and thank you, Casper, also, as well, of course. Um, let me see. Um, sorry. Um, I had a question. Um, maybe, Alicia, you can tell me a little bit about um, when you really start out with the data first, do you glance over the table to look for outliers, or do you uh, do you create a simple visualization uh, like you should? Like, do you start with charts or something like that? What's your like first starting point? So I usually start with like doing distributions. 
So you can either do this like beforehand, like in a pivot table in Excel, and you can calculate like the gender ratio or like the country and language ratio, or you can actually do it much quicker directly in the silk when you go to the explore mode and decide because they don't have charge. So the first thing is I pick a few very be interesting. So in this case it was the gender or like the language and I different movies. And then on a second after I've done this I try to like filter this uh, this data to see uh, between different subsets how this ratio vary. So for example I see the percentage of men and women directors and then I compare different uh, movie category or stuff like that. Right, right. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think you both uh, showed us really well how you go from a, uh, from a data set to um, telling a data story with it. Then you can, it's always interesting to look, for example, at geographical data. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> maps are nice, but also because usually there are like insights in this. So, for example, seeing that they're most French is the most spoken uh, language in movies at the Venice Film Festival was interesting for me. And so, yeah, I would say like distribution and comparing different subsets is something that's always interesting to look at. Uh, geographical distribution, and then also like, of course, uh, how things vary through time. So, like, where do they vary, or like, through different years and decades? And in this case, we only had uh, one year of. Uh, Venice uh, Film Festival Awards, but you could compare like throughout all the all the editions, like how is the ratio of uh, women and men director going? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it the same as 40 years ago? And this kind of things. And yeah, so these are the first thing I think are always interesting to look at. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and that's, and uh, looking at a subset. It's also what you did, Casper, right? You looked at like uh, uh, mm -hmm. Kickstarter companies of more than. If there were other questions. Um, no, the, I'm the I'm the one asking. Uh, Casper, you have anything to share as well, or what is what thing you look for when you use a data set? Yeah, yeah. a little bit like you explained uh, about focusing on subsets, and like the million dollar project. Mm -hmm. In almost every silk that we built, uh, it's easy to filter and customize, and uh, maybe use a scatter plot first to show to show uh, what kind of groups or what kind of projects or jobs uh, locations are interesting, and then focusing uh, focusing on that. And I think with the Kickstarter project, it was uh, it was easy to show that just uh, uh, a different page that focused on all the big money projects uh, was interesting and showed uh, different information that you could then compare to the averages or the totals of the complete data set. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, thank you guys. Thanks again. Um, uh, I uh, certainly learned a lot, and I uh, think uh, uh, a lot of other people did as well. Um, you can always... Uh, uh, email us with any questions you might have. Let me uh, see if I had some. Yeah, um, I'll uh, email everyone a, a, a recap tomorrow, um, and uh, we'll probably uh, uh, email you one more time later to ask if you want to sign up for uh, any future webinars we are holding. And again, uh, please go to silk-webinars.silk.co to. Uh, to see all the webinars, I will add this one uh, 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 right after uh, we uh, we're finished. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon. Bye.